Well, it's early January now in Wisconsin, and I had sold the old snow plow with the Ranger. A few months ago, I did pick up a new plow for the General, and you know, we live in an on-demand kind of world, and I'm an on-demand kind of guy, which I guess means I should probably get that plow installed today. So how much trouble am I in for waiting to the last minute? Well, not any, yet, because it's still snowing, so I can still tell my wife that, you know, it doesn't make sense to plow until it stops snowing. How much do we have so far? Eh, just under five. They're talking 10 to 12 inches. So definitely uh, expecting it to snow the rest of the day, which is good because that means I've got some time to get this done. Now, last week I put a new clutch on our General because our clutch started going a while ago. Again, kind of figured, you know, I was on borrowed time and I really needed to get that done before I started plowing. So we got that installed. It's working good so far. It's a Dura clutch. You can watch uh, that video. I'll put the link up here in one of the corners for you. But now we better get this plow on and we better do it fast. The plow I ordered is the Polaris Glacier Pro HD plow kit. It should be quite a bit nicer than the old plow that we had on our Ranger. The blade is bigger and it has a hydraulic control. So not only will I be able to winch the plow up and down, I should also be able to control the left to right angle of it from inside the cab, meaning I won't have to get outside and freeze my butt off in the cold every single time I need to move the plow. One thing that should be pretty cool and one reason why I bought this system is if and when we do buy another Ranger, this plow should be compatible with our Ranger. We'll just need a different mount that attaches to the body of the machine. Sure enough, the first thing that's going to have to come off is our bumper. And it looks like that is just held on by two bolts right there. Those are the nuts that were on the back there. That whole thing should come off. Next thing it says is to remove the grill using these rivets. Honestly, the easiest way I've found to remove these is with a side cut pliers. Just don't squeeze them too tight. That way you can just kind of get underneath them and pull them out. It's probably a good idea to have some of these spare on hand because they get chewed up. I should probably buy some. And we got to cut out this top portion. Trim the area as shown. Yeah, plastic seems pretty soft, so we'll see if we can just cut it with a Exacto knife here, sure enough, yep, pretty easy. Yep, so the drawing is correct does show that they want you to come all the way down to the bottom here. This back plate here for the bottom part of the factory bumper. So 
we're supposed to install this mounting bracket to the frame behind here, but we already have the bumper kit, which I'm guessing most people are going to. The front bumper kit, part number 288-1094 installed. So I bet we don't have to do that because that's what this mount does here. It would be really nice if the directions said, if you have the bumper kit, because I'm assuming most people are going to, you don't need to do that. Um, so we're gonna have to kind of figure this out a little bit ourselves now. So I guess we'll just skip that part. Still a bumper support bracket, yeah, we don't need that. Fasten the mount plate, 21, to frame and upper part of the bumper support bracket using four bolts. That's probably where we're at. That's really what we need to do. Now the question becomes, how do we do that with this thing? Does that go... That's gotta go... Underneath this? I mean, <laughs> they don't show this thing. How does it attach? Do I need to take that off? They don't tell me I need to take that off. Sure looks like I need to. Yeah, the directions are all for if you don't have the bumper kit and this and that too, and then it, and then it doesn't tell you anything about what to do if you have the bumper kit. But I don't see how you get this in here without pulling this off. It tells you to remove this little grill fascia piece, which sure. I did, but. Yeah, it's actually pretty loose now. Maybe I can just slip it in. Maybe I'll pass it. Oops, sorry. You it's okay. okay? It's okay. You didn't finish that. I got okay. my hand out. Alright, good. Do you need good. to hold that? No, no, no. Or you got no, it? No, okay. Don't worry about it. I'll get her. Okay. I can tell you the snow is deep as hell. Oh, I know. It's. It was five inches when I measured a couple hours ago. I would guess it's probably getting close to get seven by now. Wow, all right. Groovy, good. well I better, I better get this thing done. <laughs> Man, so do I need to remove that? I wish they told you if you needed to do that. Because it doesn't seem to fit quite right. Get on there. There we go. All right, we got one on at least. So we're taking just the nut and bolt here, popping it through those two. Center, center holes. And then the big bumper pillars are gonna obviously go back to this. Fasten the rear part of the mount plate to skid plate after using two bolts, two lock washers, two flat washers, and the tightening plate, 15. Tightening plate. This is the tightening plate. Okay. So that's gonna go in on top like that. So there is the existing skid plate or it's this is part of the frame this is welded to the frame up here of the general and then this is our new snow plow attachment piece so that's going to go up like that and then through these back two holes bolts are going to get inserted lock washer washer and then on the top side this plate right here basically it's going to go on the top side of this come down from the top and then that will hold it up not easy to reach. There we go. There we go, just like that. It's interesting, this looked like it should kind of tuck in somewhere, but it does not. So that's what she looks like now. We have this plate, this big mounting bracket, underneath our plastic 
fascia underneath the bumper and all of that stuff. Now the million dollar question, which will be answered shortly, is was I supposed to remove this bracket here? This, I'm not 100% sure, I'm gonna have to look. Maybe that came with the bumper mount because everything seems to line up just right. I don't think we need to take that off. I think that that's what this piece is supposed to be on the back side. It's supposed to mount to support this thing. But I think the existing, existing bracket does it. And the existing bracket is connected a whole bunch of bolts. It's bolted like into the suspension right there. Your upper A-arm. So I'm not going to mess with that. I'm going to see. I think this is going to work. how that will go. Cool. Yeah, trees are getting weighted down pretty heavy. Look how low those branches are hanging over there underneath those pine trees. They are basically touching the ground. Whew. It is wet, heavy snow. It's like 32 degrees or 31 degrees. So this will be a real true test of our plow. That's for sure. Eight, almost nine inches. Easy uh, eight inches, almost nine right now. So we better get this thing together. At this point, I do believe it is time to reinstall our bumper. It was actually pretty easy. It's just because we had the factory bumper kit, so many of the directions didn't apply to it. So look at all the things. I didn't use this bracket. I didn't use this bracket. I didn't use this bracket. And I didn't use all of this hardware. So the actual plow mount bracket is connected just using four bolts. That's it. That is it. Okay, let's put the front bumper back on. These are 17 millimeter, I do believe. I should have checked that before I tried balancing everything. Oh man. Down here we have these two bolts, but this plate has to drop in behind there. Which I'm not sure how we do now. There is no way this is gonna fit back there anymore. It, it can't, I don't know, well, can it? Maybe, I don't know. We're gonna, well, we'll try. We'll see. Maybe it can. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh, but wait, it's supposed to hang down lower than that, isn't it? to hook onto that thing? That plate's gonna be in the way. What did it hook onto? Oh dear. I'm not sure. We're gonna have to figure this out. Might have to improvise. I don't know how you get a wrench back there to, to tighten a bolt. So we're gonna we're gonna play around with some stuff. 
So I just figured something out there. So you can see right there at the top, there's that little kind of uh, inside that square, inside that square piece right where my light is shining, just above those two bolts. So right now we're looking up from underneath the front bumper. That tab at the very top, let me see if I can move it. Hopefully you can see that. That is the backing piece that our bolts screw into to hold the bottom of the bumper to the frame. It is too tight. Oh, maybe, maybe I can get it in there. But right now when I have it, have the plow adapter or plow mount bolted down, it's a little too tight to seem to want to slide down in there. So I might need to loosen this a bit in order to get that on there. We'll see. Get my hand up there. This is a tough reach. There's no way that's gonna fit. I'm gonna have to loosen that. Oh, maybe. Oh, ha ha. No, it does slide in. It does slide in, look at that. You just gotta wiggle it a little bit. There is enough room, you just gotta get it lined up just right. There we go. That's good, because I don't know how you would get a wrench back there to hold some nuts down. I think it would not be possible. Bingo. That was actually pretty easy. Oh, you know what? I never reinstalled, oh shoot. That's a bummer. Can I get to that? No way. Oh, maybe. I totally forgot to secure this whole fascia to back to the frame. Son of a gun. These things aren't hard enough to get off already when you have full access to them. Just like so. And on the side, same thing. Now you can put everything back together. You should put this piece on next and then your bumper last. The opposite order that I did it. So let's summarize that entire process if you have the factory front bumper already on here. Disregard all the stuff about the bracket mounting to the frame. You don't need to worry about that. You should already have it. Take off the bumper using two bolts down here two bolts up here. The bolts down here have a bracket on the back side that locks the bolts uh, into that's threaded. These, you need a wrench on the back side. I believe it was an 18 millimeter and a 17 millimeter socket. These caps pop off. Take your bumper off. You gotta remove this plastic fascia, fascia piece with four of these little body you know, pop plastic, pop rivet kind of things. Fasteners, uh, pull those out, and then you have to cut out, just like it's in the instructions, uh, all the way down, so basically the two kind of center holes become one. There are two, I believe they're T40 Torx fasteners that secure this whole plastic bottom piece. This isn't in the instructions. At least it's not clear, in my opinion. You need to pull those out, and that'll give you just enough where you can kind of pull the whole body piece, front body piece away from the machine and take your plow mount bracket and slip it up underneath. Then that bolts, using four bolts, just like in the instructions, it shows you where, kind of two up front uh, at the top going straight in with nuts on the back side on either side of this uh, uh, plow attachment piece. And then there's two on the bottom 
and that uses a bracket that's kind of like this one. Looks kind of like this one, but it's the other one. That drops in from the top, that bolts in there, nice and firm. After that then, you will reattach the whole bottom plastic uh, fender part, or whatever you'd call this, and then reattach this little fascia piece, and then bolt your bumper back on. So it's actually not that difficult, there's just a whole bunch of instructions that don't apply to you. Pivot assembly, pin pops out and then drops in. Let's see, I got it backwards. Oh, that's good to know, you really can't, oh yeah, that's gonna fit a lot better. Come on. There we go. Control arm down. So first thing we need to do, it looks like, is we're gonna have to install this bracket. I don't know if it'll fit with those two screws or not that hold our windshield washer fluid. Hopefully, I would think so. We got to remove our horn, which is an aftermarket accessory. We'll have to put that somewhere else. And this noise filter for my comm system, which I don't like anyways. So that's fine. So the power is out. So I'm going to go Set up our generator. I think it's probably gonna be a while until it gets back on, given the pretty heavy snow. I'm sure there's other people, higher priority cities and stuff like that without power as well, which means I think on a day like today in my past experience for usually at least a couple hours. Hi, Grant. Hi, you don't need that white but you found glow sticks. You found glow sticks, that's awesome. Good deal. We're using this up I like it. Good idea, buddy. Okay. All right. I gotta flip the power first. Give me a minute. Hold on to your butts. Well, the power is back on. 
what a mess. Our generator panel, our backup generator panel, uh, blew a uh, watt meter, I guess. Um, so half of our half of our things on that backup generator panel weren't working. So I was screwing around with that, and uh, we're back at it, and we're doing wiring stuff here. So, oh boy. You are most likely going to need something like this to tighten those down. Extremely awkward. There you go. Yeah, you might just want to bolt these relays on first, but we made it work. We're going to route these wiring harnesses. These wiring ends down through the hole. Uh, going down underneath the hood. So we routed that tilt wire uh, up and over kind of a bracket up there. Screwed it with some zip ties. Basically we just want to keep it away from the hot uh, like radiator hose and radiator and stuff like that. So I ran it down this uh, piece of frame here, away from the radiator, zip tied it a couple places, and then snuck it through that hole in front of the radiator. Right there. There it is on the front of that frame piece. And then the plug I'll probably just drill a hole right about there, I guess, and connect it. I just want to kind of see how everything fits together first. Okay, I couldn't show you what I was doing because I couldn't hold the camera and get it back here and whatnot. But the other three connectors coming off the new harness uh, basically kind of daisy chain into the uh, existing winch uh, controls. So depending if you have the wireless control, which I do, though my remote doesn't seem to work, the winch works. So I think I've got it all hooked up correctly. Uh, the instructions do tell you how to do it. So you just got to read it carefully and link them all together. So I got my wireless, I've got my new harness here, and then I've got the plugs coming off of the winch. And at least with my dash switch, the winch still works. So I think I did it correctly. This is all looking at it from the passenger side front tire. So then the last harness wire here, just kind of fed it down along with the main harness uh, through the center console area and we'll have to try to pick it up inside. We're going to pop off this access panel on the side here and hopefully access that wire. And look at that, there's our, there is our wire. We got it. Woohoo! You can see how quickly my workbench became overwhelmed tonight as I was working on different projects, trying to restore power and all that stuff. So now, I'm going to get this handle set up. Oops, so now we have our wiring harness that will connect to this. That says plow right. So we're going to install that there with one of the neutral wires. There we go. So we got our wiring harness all connected. Looks good. We're going to go plug it in make sure it works. We're dropping our wiring harness down through there. Flip on our ignition and obviously we don't have the cylinder connected but up and down should work. Look at that. Cool. Next thing we gotta do, we gotta cut off the shifter knob, which I'm not a big fan of, but that's what we gotta do to make it work. So we're gonna do it. Carefully, right? No big deal. Be 
careful with those not to go, not to strip it. Should probably do this by hand. Should. All right, we're just gonna tighten these by hand. Yeah, those are good. Hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see. Feels a little flimsier. That's left. Makes sense. Shortens it up. And right extends it. So now we can connect this to the plow bracket. So we've got our plow. It's a heavy sucker. We're gonna leave it in the box so we don't scratch it up. And you're gonna need this bit. You've got these flanges and these big bolts. So we're gonna actually pick up the frame and we're gonna lower it down onto there and then secure it with the bolts and washers and flange. So you can see, hopefully, if I don't blast it with too much light, you can see that flange, this is the flange, and then that silver piece in between is also the flange. So it just keeps you from sandwiching everything too tight together. And now it's the pivots. Excellent. Next thing you're gonna need, you're gonna need the big plow spring and you're gonna need these eye bolts. Move you a little closer here. So I just left the plow on the ground here and we're gonna hook the spring first on the top eye here. Put the bolt in and then Put the bolt through the bracket, the eye down here. We're going to do that with the other side too. So we have the spring hooked in there to that eye bolt, bolt there. This is the hook for our winch, so we'll have to Put that through there and then we use this to uh, adjust how high the plow lifts. All right, next we have these pins, pretty self-explanatory. Those pins are going to connect the plow to that. So I'll have to adjust that height a little bit. Jack height. Keep me from having to pick it up like that. You've got the rubber extension or whatever, I don't know what you call it, but it just keeps snow from flipping over the blade. It kind of directs snow back down. And then you've got these brackets and a bunch of carriage bolts. The brackets have square holes in them, so the carriage bolt goes in from the top. And then these nuts are a little tricky because you got to kind of reach underneath here, but not too bad. Washer. And then another washer. And there 
better than that. Well, finished it up basically last night. Seems to work all right. We are going to put everything back together and we're just gonna plow the driveway just down to the road quick so we can get the kids to school. They got a late school start this morning. Otherwise I would have had to stay up a little bit later to finish it up, but we're gonna button everything back down. I'm not gonna bother putting on the windows yet. I will do that in a little bit. This should only take a few minutes just to plow what I need to. Gonna have to make some fine tuning adjustments to the plow there. I need some longer deep sockets and I can't, I guess I don't have any metric deep sockets that'll fit in there. So I'm gonna have to mess with that. Uh, but otherwise, looks pretty slick. We'll go through it all here in just a little bit, but I'm gonna put the hood back on, and I'll put that horn back in there and uh, give her a quick uh, test. Overall, the installation process wasn't really hard, but the directions weren't super clear at times, especially dealing with the whole front bumper thing. The directions are designed as if you don't have a front bumper at all, so that added a little confusion and definitely took me a while to figure out. Been really happy with how the General's been performing plowing snow. I actually thought we would wind up picking up another Ranger and transferring the plow over there. But actually the general being heavier and having that longer wheelbase, it actually seems to slip less and I've been really happy with how it plows the wet heavy snow. The Glacier HD plow is definitely heavier than our old one so I think that's helping too. The plow doesn't ride up on top of the snow as much as the lighter plow did that we had on our older Ranger. The turning radius is definitely wider on the general but I feel the trade-off is worth it considering the less slip that I get when plowing the wet, heavy snow. We've also been plowing with that new Dura clutch we recently installed, and that has definitely made the starting and stopping and reversing so much smoother, so we've been really happy with that so far. So that's the installation of the Glacier HD plow system. Plowed with it for an entire winter, uh, several wet, heavy snows, and been pretty happy with it. I would say for the foreseeable future, the General is going to be our plowing machine. It's definitely nice to have a heated enclosed cab and not have to get out to move the plow left or right every time I need to make an adjustment. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.